Are you wasting money with your HVAC system? In today's video, I wanna give you five mistakes I see homeowners making. In a lot of situations, you can help alleviate yourself without getting a pro involved, without spending a lot of money, stop making some of these mistakes. Let's dive into it. Number one is focusing on the HVAC system instead of fixing the real issue. So a lot of folks will focus on the heating and air system when the problem might be the insulation in the home or some sort of home envelope issue. I personally at my heating and air business that I ran for 12 years before selling it had customers tell me that yeah, this system doesn't do as well as I'd like it to. Let's just up the size on it without doing a load calculation, without doing things properly and addressing the home, without running a thermal camera or having a building science expert audit the home. They'll just simply buy a bigger system that will, by the way, be possibly oversized for the ductwork, be possibly an issue with the overall sizing and short cycling and all the other ins and outs of properly sizing the heating and air system. In fact, this is not always a homeowner issue. Sometimes there are heating and air companies that are kind of throwing solutions at the problem. They're just throwing mud on the wall at times, and they're not taking the time to figure out what the actual problem is. I had a customer years ago that had four four space heaters running in their living room and also the ductless unit that was installed, wondering why the system was simply not keeping up with that space. And with all those things running, we're talking about a living room that was, I don't know, somewhere around 12 or 14 feet square and a 9,000 BTU ductless unit should have been more than enough for that space. If it were insulated well, if it were installed in a home where the construction was tight and everything was built well, it would have been more than enough. But in this case, we're talking about multiple space heaters and that ductless unit simply not being able to keep up. So that's a problem. That's a problem with the room. That's not a problem with the heating and air system. Other things to think about, leaky ductwork, poor attic insulation and floor insulation, drafty windows, all of those things can force the HVAC system to work harder than it was originally designed to. Homeowners often skip energy audits that could pinpoint bigger and cheaper fixes. But before you get all of these different people involved, some of these things just by simply Googling it or watching a few YouTube videos and taking a thermal camera, maybe even simply putting your hand over the windows or doors, things like that, you might be able to address some of these issues yourself. Number two, using the wrong thermostat settings or simply misusing a smart thermostat. A lot of thermostats today have all kinds of capabilities in it that can help you save money. I've actually had customers that had thermostats with the wrong balance point set, with the wrong heat droop set, and simply adjusting some of those settings in the thermostat ended up making the system run better, ended up making the homeowner more comfortable, and at the end of the day, making that system more efficient, lower utility bills. That's the goal here, right? But having some of these systems, there's something called a backup heat stage timer. We've done other videos on that you can set it up to where you hear a lot of people say, gradually turn the temperature up on a thermostat instead of just setting it where you ultimately want that temperature to be. You might be causing the auxiliary heat to kick on when you don't necessarily need it. And turning on some of those settings like the stage timer might actually help you save money. Utilizing the programming and the schedule Scheduling in that thermostat is another. A lot of folks don't take advantage of that and keeping a consistent temperature instead of adjusting it when you're away or sleeping. All of these things are things you can do yourself again without having to call a professional, without having to spend a bunch of money on someone trying to dial in things. These are things that you can control yourself. Take a moment to read the operating manual in that thermostat. Sometimes getting to know your thermostat getting more familiar with it and understanding all the features that it's capable of could save you money just from knowing that. Number three, neglecting regular maintenance and paying for it later. Dirty filters increase energy costs and strain the system. I think a lot of folks think that the air filter is there for indoor air quality and trying to keep the air in your home cleaner, when in reality, the only reason it's there, at least a lot of the systems that are out there, the main reason it's there is to protect the heating and air system, to protect it from getting super dirty so it doesn't get to the point where it's running inefficiently or 
having breakdowns. Yes, there are air filters out there designed to clean the air. Yes, there are air filters out there that will clean the air, making it better for you to breathe. But ultimately, those main disposable air filters that are installed in that system when the system is originally installed, the main reason they're there is to protect the heating and air system, not you. So staying on top of that, the dirtier that air filter gets, the more the holes in that filter continue to get clogged up. Ultimately, the particulates are supposed to be caught, but the air is supposed to get through some of those holes. The more clogged they get, the harder your system has to run. Skipping regular maintenance can result in expensive breakdowns that could have been avoided. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to homeowners who have said to me, in fact, some of you have commented on my videos saying, I've never gotten regular maintenance done to my system. I don't need it. My system runs just fine. And those are the folks that in a lot of cases, they ultimately end up paying the price and they don't understand why. So having a professional, I don't even own a business anymore, so I don't have a dog in this race. A lot of folks say, oh, you're just saying that because it helps your business. I sold my business a while back. And so now you're getting a third party professional opinion. Yes, I think maintenance is necessary, especially if you want to lower your utility bills. Number four is all about airflow, closing the vents in unused rooms thinking it saves you energy. And in reality, you're putting more strain on that system. Many homeowners believe that shutting the vents reduce energy use, but it actually increases the strain. The ductwork was originally sized to move a certain amount of air. And when you start closing vents, especially closing them entirely, it's almost like you've now added a damper to that space. You're pushing more air to other spaces. But when in reality, what you're doing is you have a blower motor trying to push a certain amount of air through a much smaller space. I always used to say to folks, let's close one nostril and cover half your mouth and then live the rest of your life trying to now breathe through those smaller holes. Is it possible? Sure. Does it still work? Sure. But could you have days when you go for a jog that you're going to wish you had better airflow through your mouth and nose? Yes, your heating and air system is no different. Modern HVAC systems are designed for balanced airflow. Closing vents can disrupt efficiency. Just know that today's heating and air systems aren't like they were years ago. We today we have ECM motors, variable speed motors, constant torque, all these different types of systems that are designed to move air, which is better. It's more efficient especially when the ductwork is sized properly and things are not closed or covered. But when you start installing it in a home, in a system where folks are restricting airflow in some way, closing the vents can lead to pressure buildups, leaks, and even damage to the system. And just know this can also affect the envelope of the home, right? So we're talking about a home where you've now closed off part of the house. Those spaces are now becoming a negative pressure because all the rooms around it are now pushing to it. And ultimately it's not just a strain on the system. It's also affecting the overall design of that home and how efficient your home can be heated or cooled. I'm not saying there's not a place where you couldn't, you know, at times close vents halfway. I'm not saying there aren't times when you could install zoning dampers that could open and close based on what your needs are. All I'm saying is without knowing what those pressures are without knowing the static that you're now adding to that ductwork, you could be causing more harm than good. So just know that. Number five is ignoring humidity control. Another big one where high humidity makes the AC work harder. Low humidity can cause heat loss. High humidity makes AC work harder to maintain comfort, driving up energy costs. My old boss used to say that 72 degrees in your house may not be the same thing as 72 degrees in my house because humidity affects your comfort. High humidity could make you feel warmer than you actually are. Controlling that humidity could play a big role on your energy savings. Low humidity in the winter makes heating less effective and increases energy use. So adding a whole home dehumidifier in the summer or a humidifier in the winter can help reduce HVAC strain and improve efficiency. And we're not even getting into the whole indoor air quality aspect of keeping that humidity in the right. They call it the safe zone because if the humidity gets too high, you could be exposed to mold and a bunch of other issues. Whereas if the humidity gets too low, now you're opening yourself up to having other breathing problems, among other things. We're not even talking about home construction at this point. So just controlling the humidity better and understanding that that could affect 
your overall comfort and energy savings. That's my big five. A few other honorable mentions that we'll throw out there. We didn't even talk about some of the other components in your home, such as, say, closing the curtains on a hot July day, keeping some of that sunlight out because there is a such thing as some of the greenhouse effect where sunlight makes it through your windows. Other things like running the ceiling fans, being able to circulate the air better in that house. And so you don't have any stale air parts of the house where air is just not moving. Other things to consider, such as not running the heating and air system when nobody is home, forgetting to run your schedules, forgetting to put that thing in vacation mode, forgetting to use some of the other features like geofencing and things like that might actually help you save money in the long run. Another thing to maybe note is using the wrong fan setting. A lot of folks will turn their thermostat to the on position thinking that, well, yeah, I want to use my AC, so I want it to be on, not realizing that that can affect your humidity. I have seen situations where that actually made the humidity higher because of the evaporation of the condensation. And I'm not, that's a whole nother video. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on that, but just know that. And if you were to flip the setting to the auto position, it would only run when that system is calling for heat or cooling. And if you're looking for a happy medium, a lot of thermostats today have a circulation feature. So it's somewhere in the middle. It's running more than when the system is running. You're still having air pulled across that coil, getting the maximum amount of the extended fan runtime and other features like that. And you're circulating air through parts of the house that have that stale air that's been just sitting there, but it's not running all the time. And so ultimately, yes, a audit of your home from a building scientist, that's what a lot of them are calling themselves, but folks that are doing blower door tests, thermal imaging, making sure that everything is up to snuff on the house itself, all that can help, but also having the ductwork itself. If you're having issues with the HVAC unit itself, being able to keep temperature or run efficiently. Maybe the problem could be with the ductwork. Maybe it needs to be sealed better. Maybe it needs to be cleaned better. Maybe it could be pulling some of that hot air from the attic. It all depends. Every house is different. Let me know your thoughts down below. Did I miss something, a big one that could help you save a bunch of energy? I'd love to hear about that. Definitely hit that like button if you got any value out of this video. So that way other folks could see this video and help them as well. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about things I wish I knew about air filters at a younger age. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.